Hello, uh, this is an introduction for teachers who want to teach hydraulics. Uh, it's a review of the resources we have available on the e4training.com website. So we have lesson plans and we have experiments so that you can, or students can run tests. Uh, and this is just an introduction to take you through how to use the site and what content it's got available. Uh, it's been produced by uh, design, hydraulic design engineers so with pump design, valve design experience and on mobile, industrial and other types of system design as well. But it's intended for um, from beginners to uh, advanced uh, maintenance engineers, top end maintenance engineers, so it covers the whole spectrum uh, between those two areas. Um, and the two things you need to take away from today, you must remember, is the fact that we've got structured lesson plans. So the lessons are produced for you with all the subject, the topics that you need to get across in each lesson. Um, and we have lots of uh, virtual test rigs where students can run experiments. So you don't need expensive uh, and dangerous equipment in your test shops. You can actually run the experiments online on their computers and mobile devices. So um, we cover all the fundamental principles of lots of experiments and some troubleshooting diagnostics issues as we get more advanced. So let me start by showing you a typical teacher planning sheet. Uh, so this is uh, your lesson plans. They've been developed, the format's been developed after discussions with US and UK teachers. Uh, some of the words, the spellings, English and the terminology may be American, but it, they're pretty similar to requirements. Um, basically, we cover the aims of each section, so we have a number of different uh, lesson plans. Uh, duration, it depends on your students really, because um, some will work fairly quickly through this if they have a bit of experience. Others, you may uh, take a lot longer to guide them through it. Um, we clearly lay out the objectives in each uh, each section, so we try and keep the objectives down to a few because uh, we know giving too much just confuses and there is a structure so we say what you do need to know before we get not previous knowledge required and the equipment you may need to run these lessons so they're all available for teachers in word format so you can actually change and update them if you want to yourselves anyway depending on your students uh, the early birds of people come in a lot of what we've tried to do here is to engage make it interesting for students because uh, hydraulics is a lovely subject we have the best the biggest uh, robots and machines so it's quite a, a fun subject so we're trying to engage and get people interested in coming into the industry um, so we do that with the early birds the question is when you get a few people have turned up and not everyone's in the class and um, today's general subject interest uh, and then we go on through the lesson so again each little topic will give you some uh, headlining factors that you need to explain and a link to the website page where that information is explained in more detail uh, this is clearly as you can see looking at symbols there's lots of different symbols so you know 10 minutes for each is, is probably a bit quick if uh, if it's beginners to the subject um, you may want to break it down in slightly different ways as well we find that symbols are one of the things that is a nice way to start a lesson with a symbol uh, students seem to like a lot of students like being starting with a symbol and understanding that before they work through the valve so you may w wish to mix it up but that's um, the information is here and we've got lesson plans for the valves as well uh, we do cover a lot of symbols in this module uh, mobile specializations and industrial uh, have different ones so we provide links to the depending on what subjects and topics your students may be working on in the future and then we come down to uh, the key point is the practical exercises of coursework so we give you links to experiments that you can do online in simulation programs and circuit builders so there are things you can do um, relevant to each lesson plan that will engage your students your students can go away and do themselves uh, because as we know you see you forget you hear you remember and you do and you understand so these are the lesson plans uh, always a quiz at the end 
to check to see how they've got on and of course all the results from the uh, experiments feed back to your LMS systems. Now, as you remember, the second thing I'd say what's really important are the experiments. This is a simple relief valve. So we can now adjust the pressure as we would on a proper test rig. And as the pressure gets high enough, the valve opens and we can see we've got a pilot section opening, flow and pressure drop that creates a pressure drop across here which opens the main stage if we were to adjust the return line pressure at 2, this one's controlling 1, then it shuts again because it works with the pressure difference. So you can run these little experiments and tests, you can actually adjust the valve, you can change the flow rates and see the effect. So you can give your students a, a question and they can come back with the result from the experiment. Uh, we've set up suggested exercises and observations for you as well. So um, you can use these if you wish. We do give the answers, but um, you know that's it's information to help you. There are other things in the lesson plans where uh, we don't. So uh, we give quite a lot of help as much as we can for you to be able to run these tests. And there are lots of different tests um, in each section. All our uh, experiments tend to have the same format: step through and drop downs, and our LRS. Results. So this will feed into any modern LMS system. Um, you can post your results, put your keys in, and it will send all the results back for each student so you can analyse how how they've been doing. So that's the two main things I say we want you to take away. We've got lesson plans and we've got experiments, the key things. Uh, with the website itself, there are a couple of menu systems. Uh, this is one that shows all the content we've got. We've got self-study plans so there are more uh, lesson plans that if you need to take a look at more more ideas and more subjects or a subject in more detail. Um, we try and keep consistent operation all the way through the website so it might take a little bit of time to get to know where things are but uh, once you find it everything works in the same way so it should be fairly easy, easy to navigate. And this um, is probably we try to summarize things quite clearly here so we've got our subjects start for the very easy so what is hydraulics we're starting from a point where people don't even know what it does or typically what machines use it so it starts from a very basic level and comparing electric pneumatics and hydraulics so that everyone knows why hydraulics is the best uh, basic components basic circuit design and just an exa example of a tractor. So this is for, for real beginners. Um, we then work through hydraulic safety, obviously one of the key issues here. It can be very dangerous. Uh, formulas and fundamentals, so um, pressure and forces, all the things that you do need to know, students do need to know, some, some more than others. Principles, uh, a lot of the basic hydraulic principles um, just covering them so that people get familiar and, and can interpret their hydraulics quite well. Fluid contamination, one of the key things, quite boring but certainly important. Um, then we get into our pumps, different types of pumps, control valves. As you can see we go through all our actuators, the ancillary equipment, power units, maintenance and we're getting slightly more advanced as we go down uh, maintenance, testing and instruments instrumentation then the different design strategies um, and hydraulic circuits and little, little project applications which we'll come on to in a minute if we just look at the different types of content for each section we've got some self-study plans which I've said are uh, similar to the lesson plans but for there's more of them in there they don't have the teaching elements in normally um, We've got tutorials, which are uh, sort of a PowerPoint presentation, but with interactivity and a little quiz. So these are key points, give you some of the key points. They're quite nice for students to do on their own. We appreciate you'll get students that are faster than others and want a little bit more to keep them going. So you can give them some of the additional learning resources while uh, the others are catching up. Uh, web sections on everything. So this is just text and pictures, but basically 
the most detail. Um, and then we've got a lot of videos just to summarize the key points and take you through the uh, website details and we've got our exercises and uh, we can see it com how it compares to standard industrial courses uh, the contents pretty much the same as other people cover so let's that's essentially the menu and system and the range of content that's included in the website if there are other areas you require then please let us know because we're extending extending the site all the time so if we come on to um, the text section of the site now it, this is where most of the information is but it's important to know the structure of this because we have a standard and a pro section for relief valves, pressure relief valves we start off with um, what pressure relief valves do and where they're used so initially we're we're looking at people that might just be um, selling or buying hydraulic equipment so they really need to know what they're buying and selling so it's quite a low level but it, it is this first point of what actually the equipment does now with relief valves actually there are quite a lot of uh, things that they do so uh, there's a number of sections here explaining what different feet different functions a relief valve might do um, then as you get a little bit more involved you might want to know um, so for basic if people are repairing um, changing hoses very basic maintenance uh, then and managing people that work on systems you might want to understand how a pressure relief valve works so in a basic form we cover here exactly what it does uh, and I say this is each section is the same that we build it up in complexity for the different um, professions uh, different reasons pe people might be actually needing to learn about hydraulics <coughs> um, the final section here is the different types of relief valve so different types of valves so here we'll discuss well, all, the, all the different ones there are there are quite a lot of different relief valves I'll um, I would just like to point out this section here because one of the best lessons I ever had in hydraulics, one of the very first um, courses I went on, uh, they told me that hydraulics is very simple, there's nothing to it. It's only a pressure against an area which forces a piston or a ball in this case against a spring. And when this pressure is higher than the spring, it opens and allows flow through you've got different types of pistons and cylinders and but it's they're all the same they've all got a pressure area working against a spring now you've then got an orifice so the orifice controls the flow across it because this is adding a pressure drop across here is adding to the back pressure on the spring and so this will control the speed at which the uh, valve opens the response times or flow rates to systems uh, cylinders moving and pretty much that's uh, you can define every valve just by springs and areas and pressures and orifices um, they might have a lot more inside of them and get a lot more complicated but they all pretty much work on those basic principles so that is um, is a fundamental to hydraulics and uh, you can go a long way just knowing how to calculate the pressure drop across an orifice and pressure areas so that's a, a key point but as I was saying, this is um, this section really is just looking at different types of relief valve or different types of valve. And um, this is, uh, I say, if you're working purchasing, sales, and basic maintenance, and that's the type of things you need to know. But we're very much aware these days that you need to be safe to work on different systems, and you need to know have a complete different level of knowledge or a more detailed knowledge if you're going to replace relief valves or any valves uh, and set them up and maintain them because um, as soon as you start adjusting things that has knock-on effects to other valves so you really do need, do need to know these you need to be able to know what's inside the valve and how the valve works looking at the detail of it so um, this section now we're getting into the more detailed work that um, depending on what your students are doing they may or may not need to know but tips for maintaining operating maintaining components so there's lots of 
every valve equipment has different sort of tips, things to consider, different ways they operate. Uh, we get into the design features, which again, if you're maintaining and swapping things, you need to be able to look at the valve and see what's happening, where the pressure's being applied, what's moving against what springs, so that when you adjust it, you see how you change those settings. That's um, a key to understanding all hydraulic equipment. But uh, we're looking at the design features and characteristics within particular valves in this section. Uh, operating history, so things that are important. Um, the final section here is how to specify a pressure release valve, how to specify your equipment. Now this comes in more to design. Uh, they're the only people that should be specifying equipment. But if you've got a machine and you're maintaining it, or if you've got a problem with that machine, it could be that it was specified to work in one climate and you're using the machine somewhere else. The temperatures are different, the viscosities are different, it's working differently. So you can see, if you know how to specify a piece of equipment, you'll know how to check and diagnose if it's not working properly. So um, we give the key points here and design tips, potentially for some of them, a little bit little bit of information. It's um you know as design engineers we're not really covering this for other design engineers because that's always so particular to each type of machine but it's it's useful to know why they've been designed in certain ways uh, which we try and cover here. So that's the tech sections and I say the important thing to take away from this is the consistent layout and how we structure it for the different students so you don't teach them things that are above or below their requirements really. Um, we have videos in each section as well so that just runs through hopefully the content that we've discussed on the previous page but bringing out the key features. Um, they can be a bit fast we can throw a lot of information in but that's fine because you can watch it several times again some of the students will pick it up quicker than others so there's no problem looking at these things a few times or coming back to them because um, it's an annual annual license for these things. Uh, finally, we'll, we'll come through to this one for our experiment. This, as I've said previously, is the key to the website. It's um, it's what it's the way you learn by testing things and, and using them. So we can stick in, step in here, our different uh, change all the valves, change the loads, see how th things work. Uh, there are simulations, you can change your flow controls and see how it changes the flow values and we've got lots of different um, configurations you can work down from the top as well to step and step through each lesson. Uh, again we've got um, exercises and observations that you can do with the experiments and the answers so that all helps you give your students some um, little challenges to, to go away and find out and come back with the result. So that's essentially all the, um, the the key things to take away are the experiments now you can use them and the information's there to guide you through using them. Uh, I just want to move on now actually to some of the projects that we've got because we've got a lot of little exercises again just to keep it interesting. Down at the bottom we've got our design strategies if you're working in different sectors, industrial mobile and as such. Uh, I'll show you some circuit diagrams in a minute but we've also got some mobile scissor lift projects and industrial reservoir projects that you might like to um, to take. So this one is just looking at a, a little skid steer excavator. So Again, what, one of the main aim was to engage students and keep them interested. So we've got a little um, model here that you can drive. You're supposed to drive through without crashing into the boxes, but uh, you know it's uh, we can adjust the slew, we can extend the arm forwards and backwards. So just simple, very simple animation. But then the next stage is to go through and we've got all the controls and we can see what the controls are actually doing. So we can see if we move our levers we've got our volt ramp controls on here and that's adjusting our 
pump controllers and that drives we've got a hydrostatic drive system here with our drive pump and our motor that drives our track so just a sim it well very complicated actually what's going on but it's a nice representation where students could start uh, playing with these things and actually seeing what's happening with the text backup if they need to uh, let's look into more we've got our slew works on a different system so now we're load sensing still with a variable displacement piston pump what we can see as we change the um, the lever we're coming down through signals to the proportional valve that's adjusting the flow supplied to the motor which turns the, um, the cab and again slightly different system on our arm extend got an electrical signal coming to some these are pressure reducing valves that are feeding again onto the end of a proportional spool and that's moving drive the cylinder forwards and backwards at different speeds depending on our position of our control lever so again there's a lot of information in these um, a lot of options to look at various parts of the circuits and areas that might have contaminant for maintenance points of view areas that might have contamination issues failures um, so we do quite a lot on that if we um, finally we can go through as well to a circuit so here we've got a circuit of the hydrostatic drive system so we've got a hydrostatic pump here again the motor there um, and we can do mouse over so they can investigate the circuit to see what's happening um, we can various different exercises basically for them to do uh, that includes uh, build the circuit themselves to make sure they've remembered and I just want to show you some of the systems at the end we've got um, gauges that we can drag and drop in various exercises so you can check what's happening look at the temperatures on the various components so if you're trying to diagnose a fault we've built faults in to uh, these you can diagnose what's happening and um, or try to diagnose what's happening see what the faults are from using the different pressure gauges so there's some quite nice little exercises to do um, and let's say we'll give you probably 10-15 minutes but that can uh, could spend all day having fun on things like that and learning through exper experience which is, is what we're trying to achieve um, this is another example actually of some work and experiments that we've got so this section looks at different circuits now I always um, I always think that hydraulics is in some ways a bit similar to chess hydraulic design because in chess you only have a certain number of moves and a good player is always planning what will happen five moves ahead if they do a certain move what happens five moves in the future with hydraulics there are lots of different circuits but they've all been designed and done a hundred times before you might have five ways of achieving the same thing you select the circuit on what's going to happen five years down the line on um, uh, what's going to happen to the maintenance what's going to happen to the life and the duty and the reliability of the system so you're thinking you're not really designing a circuit but you're selecting the different types of circuit different types of components and valves that will provide the best performance in five years or with different duties you know so it's depending on what you're trying to achieve what you're doing with it and how much money you've got a budget you've got to um, what you're trying to what circuit you select so this is takes you through the different circuits and you can see the benefits and drawbacks of the different circuits and it all helps with that process so um, what we've got here is a simple very simple open center fixed displacement pump open center valve um, typically this might be used on a big uh, the US use this system a lot more because they have massive fields and the tractors go off in the morning and they don't come back till the afternoon so you just have a simple system you don't change much but it needs to be efficient um, so we have a review of explain that and then when you click on the link it takes you through to the actual circuit so now students can click and if you click in between the two solenoids it switches both at the same time and you can see what's happening and you can see your pressures you've got a gauge here 
wherever you put the gauge puts the pressure and flow in the top corner put it on the cylinders on the valves on the supply line we can see what pressure we've got so now we're wasting a lot of energy uh, because it's all going over the relief valve there's no flow there it's all going through the relief valve there we go um, if we switch don't get any flow through there and the pressure is set by the load on here what's the load? Well, we can actually change the loads because if we click on the cylinder we can put different masses and forces on we can click on the relief valve change the setting and as I say we can investigate each time so you can run little experiments on here they're very just very simple experiments so the whole point is to keep this <coughs> simple to use so you don't have to s spend most of the morning learning how to use a simulation program but uh, you can run different tests on the equipment and you can see how everything works and then the theory is that you come back to the next circuit so again we've got an open center system here with fixed displacement pump we've got two valves in series so you can just by looking at the circuit you can see you're going to have issues as when you operate one valve the other valve will be affected by what's happening to the first click on here again you go through to the actual circuit and you can test run some experiments on it uh, we give you little guides to what experiments you should be running uh, now we move on to different systems so we've got a closed center system here there's no flow going through there uh, it's running through the relief valve the majority of the time so that's going to give you different energy loss different performance factors both circuits will work independently um, and again there's lots of different examples we get through to them more common in the UK variable displacements close center valves because we're just continuously driving around little fields and changing everything so the information the content here is available if you want to read what's happening to it and uh, understand the different circuits and then give the different lessons to your students some of you uh, will already know all this of course um, but what we try to do is just to make it give all the information available and give you some interesting experiments to guide the students through it so they can work on their own the better students can extend themselves a little bit and um, the other ones can uh, can catch up or you can give them something interesting so they um see so they learn learn by experimenting that's that's really the, the whole point of the course and after our different projects examples we've always got the quiz quiz questions for you to come through and of course that all feeds information back to our your LMSs for your results so um, hopefully that's given you a bit of a, a guide a bit of an overview um, as I say the key point to take away is that we've got the lessons prepared uh, to make it easy for you and we've got a lot of experimental um, experiments for you to do actually if you um, we have got our how to use a site section which I will just show you which gives you less information than I've just said but we have got on here access to all the um, different tutorials so we've got our tutorials our quick tips PowerPoint equivalent presentations interactive presentations just to give you the key points we've got our um, simulations so all the different virtual test rigs gives you a list of them here so if you know there's something there I often find that I know something's there but I can't find it this is a nice, a nice way to um, navigate to it uh, links to all the videos explaining the different subjects uh, we've got lots of calculators if you need them for design um, and then access to the worksheets as well if you want to find out what's actually in the worksheets so there's a, a lot of information here hopefully we've got a nice clear navigation structure for you to find it um, hopefully you should as teachers just be working from the lesson plans and uh, using those to guide your students through so hopefully um, if there are any questions let us know through the website or we have got a discord discussion forum e for training in discord um, where you can ask questions and we'll try and help you through things um, but please let us know if you've got any course requirements or things we've missed and we'll try and see if we can help you okay thank you bye